this is where the magic starts, the inner chamber. Good morning. So this is a rare excursion into the White Peak for me today. Uh, it's quite late. Um, I was planning on getting here pretty early in the morning, but I stayed up late seeing if the northern lights would show again. So I'm a bit late out today, but it is a Monday, so there's not many people around. And I've come here because I was here just over a year ago checking out a couple of caves and I've ever since I've been wanting to come back. So that's what I'm doing today. I don't have a route planned. I'm just going to see where I end up. I'm sure a lot of people will recognize where I am. I'm just above uh, Thor's cave. But I'm not going to Thor's cave today. I want to check out a couple of smaller caves which are nearby and which I have visited before. I just wanted to come back and visit again. Thor's cave is actually just there. Um, I am standing directly above one of the other caves which is Seven Ways Cave. And it probably is familiar to people because you can see it quite easily from just above Thor's cave. So here we are, Seven Ways Cave. Now this is quite an interesting one because this all would have been a cave, but the outer chamber, the roof collapsed probably a very long time ago the roof collapsed so you've just got like the uh, several cave entrances there is uh, an inner chamber but it it doesn't go very far so I'm stood now in what would have been the uh, the first chamber, the outer chamber of the cave, but the roof has collapsed. There is graffiti and there is litter and there's a barbecue. And this is the inner chamber, which doesn't really go anywhere. I do have a book with me with information about these caves. I can't remember off the top of my head what the finds were in these caves, but I will put the information on the screen. But in all the caves I'm visiting today, there have been many, many discoveries, and these caves were in use all the way back to at least the Neolithic. Somewhere just the other side and down is a small cave called Thor's Fissure Cave. Fissure Cave. And that's actually where a lot of finds were found. In, in fact, I think more finds were found in that than Thor's Cave itself. Um, but that's extremely difficult and dangerous to get to. And if I'm right, I should be standing pretty much directly on top of where I want to go next. Uh, so let's go down and have a look. And this is Elderbush Cave. 
This is the main reason why I've come back today. Again, unfortunately, I can see quite a bit of litter. This is a lovely cave. It's quite interesting. It's very narrow, you can see my breath, it's quite wet and slippery, the walls of the cave are quite slimy, there's cobwebs and all kinds of creatures. There's also litter. This is where the magic starts, the inner chamber. Everything's very wet and slippery. So you do have to take care. So this cave is not big. But it's lovely. I suspect it would have been a lot bigger and in fact if you had the right gear with you you could probably get quite a bit further up some of these little passages. I was looking directly up.
So I am facing the entrance right now. There's a little bit of light coming from the entrance, but what I'm going to do is turn my head torch off and see just what it's like without the head torch. Really special place, I love this cave. Extremely narrow. I'm going to try and avoid the cobweb. It was nicely sheltered in the cave and around the cave, but the wind is really picking up. So as I mentioned, I uh, don't really have a route or anything for today's walk. Um, the main reason to come here was to revisit Elderbush Cave, which I've now done. So this is the main entrance to Thor's cave. It's a Monday. It's a working day. It's, it's not school holidays, but there's always people here. So we're not going to bother with Thor's cave today. Been in it several times. The river manifold is back to its normal status, which is running underground. Although I understand that with all the wet weather we've had not, not that long ago, it was running above ground, which is very rare. Now this is Beeston Tor. There's quite a few caves on Beeston Tor. Thank God for the stepping stones, otherwise I don't know how I'd cross. This is quite a weird experience, walking along a riverbed. I've never walked here before, I'm not really sure where I'm going or what there is to see, but Let's have a look and find out. I'm content to look at these ones from the outside, I think. I'm not going to risk trying to get up there. It is an incredibly weird experience walking along a dried river valley. Especially with these big slabs of limestone. Now I know there's some caves 
including one quite famous one called St Bertram's Cave but uh, I've never been to them I don't know exactly where they are I'm pretty sure I've walked past them because I didn't really plan where I'd be going today um, I didn't make a note of the coordinates It may have been the cave I looked at earlier from below. I know there's like three or four in a row. Unfortunately, I've got no signal at the moment, so I can't actually go online and find out what the coordinates are for St. Bertram's Cave. I was hoping there was going to be something obvious, like a, a little trail. But I haven't seen anything. So I'm just heading back now. Just getting back to Beeston Tor. So this may be it. This is my best guess. The closest I've seen to what it could be. Uh, but I'm not going to go up there. Because it's very overgrown. Lots of stinging nettles and uh, just loose boulders really, so I don't want to risk going up there. Back of the stepping stones. Hey. It's a good job. <laughs> it's a good job it is dry because I don't know what you'd do if you got to this point. Seem to be a couple missing there. Look at these views. quite a short walk. Uh, I wasn't really feeling a long walk today, having been up quite late last night looking out for the northern lights. And the weather is definitely on the change and not for the better by the looks of it. But it's been quite an enjoyable stroll 